testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of revelation, God's new covenant. All the believers, including pastors and theology students who are watching Shincheonji online seminar today, it is nice to meet you. I am Hong Ki Chol, and I'll be your host today. The testimony of Revelation's prophecy and fulfillment is required for every believer to understand, and it is being proclaimed to the whole world at this time via YouTube. The book of Revelation was once considered extremely difficult to understand, and now a Shincheonji online seminar is giving a clear explanation of it that's very easy to understand. Even pastors have been showing great interest in this content, let alone the lay members. I'm sure everyone who's been following this series is personally experiencing the fact that the more you hear this word, the clearer and more logical the book of Revelation becomes, and that it shouldn't take complex and arbitrary teachings of men to understand the Bible. I hope you will have another time of receiving God's love and grace as He gives His word like water to your thirsty soul. Let us pray with a united heart. Father God, we thank you so much. We give you all glory and thanks for being with us today and for allowing us to open up Shincheonji Online Seminar to the whole world as we testify to the prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, your new covenant. As it says in Revelation 22, 16, the chairman of Shincheonji, who is a promised shepherd of the New Testament, whom Jesus sent for the churches, is giving a clear testimony of the fulfillment of Revelation's prophecies along with the 12 tribe leaders. We've learned Revelation 6 last time, and we'll be learning Revelation 7 through a lecture given by the John tribe leader today. Please let this be a time of glorifying only you, God. Please be with us, and please be with the John tribe leader who will be preaching your word today. So that through the power of the Holy Spirit, the secrets of heaven written in Revelation 7 can be proclaimed clearly so that every believer in attendance today, including pastors and theology students, can perceive the precious words of your limitless grace and love and give thanks to you. Let us be filled with the Holy Spirit and your word so that we can give you all glory through this time. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This seminar is being conducted with strict adherence to COVID-19 guidelines and social distancing regulations. We've learned the content of Revelation 6 last time. I believe the work of God and Jesus, who definitely fulfilled their promises, is in your heart as a valuable lesson. Revelation 6 deals with the judgment and the end of the former heaven, which is spiritual Israel. In contrast, Revelation 7 is about the creation of God's new kingdom and new people, the 12 tribes. I'm sure you've all been curious to know more about the 12 tribes and the 144,000, and they'll finally be explained today. Who are the new 12 tribes and the 144,000 who are created by being sealed with God's seal, like God's stamp? And who are the great multitude dressed in white that no one could count? Would you like to find out? Revelation 7 also says that there's a great tribulation out of which the multitude in white comes. 
Our John Tribe leader, Yi Ki Won, prepared this lecture so you can clearly understand all these things. I hope you received great perception today as the fulfillment of Revelation's prophecies is testified. And I also hope that the light of the truth will shine bright onto your heart. Let us welcome up John Tribe Leader Yi Ki Won, who will be preaching the word today. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Hello, my name is Lee Ki Won, who was appointed under the name of John. Today, we will go over Revelation chapter 7, continuing the series from our last lecture. Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. The words I will testify today will be the contents of Revelation chapter 7. If we look at the title of Revelation chapter 7, it is the newly created 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel. So if you look at the front of the title, it says newly created. Then what does this mean? Because what was created previously became corrupt. It has the meaning of creating again. So today, God is creating God's new kingdom and new people. And that is the 12 tribes of the new spiritual Israel mentioned in Revelation chapter 7. So if God's purpose in the six books of the Bible and in the book of Revelation could be summed up in a few words, it would be the creation of a new kingdom and new people, the 12 tribes. This was God's final purpose. Allow me to tell you the flow of the contents of Revelation chapter 7. First, in Revelation chapter 6, the previous sun, moon, and stars were judged. Now I know that you have learned this well last time with the leader of Thomas' tribe. Sadly, the tabernacle of God, the tabernacle temple, and its saints ate the food sacrificed to idols offered by the Nicolaitans and committed adultery and became one with Satan's shepherd. And in the end, they became those who belonged to Satan, hiding in gen Gentile caves, mountains, and rocks. And because of this, God's tabernacle temple and its saints were judged, destroyed, and disappeared. However, this was not just the end of just a single church, but the end of an era. Now that the kingdom and people of God disappeared, that is why God must create His new kingdom and new people again. And that is spoken here in Revelation chapter 7. So a new kingdom, a new people, the 144,000 people who are first sealed within the 12 tribes will be created. And if you go to Revelation chapter 7, 9 to 14, you will see a great multitude dressed in white. Therefore, these people will now become God's children and people who will be chosen by God at the end of age. So to continue, let's read Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 to 4 together, and I'll speak of the content. Let's read, after this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the forehead of the servants of our God. Then I heard the number of those who are sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. Yes, you have read well. The first thing it says in Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 is, After this. This expression makes known what occurs before and after an event. 
Then what was this event that it is speaking of? It is after the events of Revelation chapter 6. It was as it was forementioned, the former heaven set sun, moon, and stars were judged and disappeared. In other words, they were the people of God that are called first heaven and first earth had disappeared. These events are the fulfillment of the words in Matthew chapter 8 verse 12, where the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So after the events of Revelation chapter 6, Revelation chapter 7 fulfills. Then if we look at the contents from verses 1 to 8, the 12 tribes, the 144,000 are sealed. Then this is the event that fulfills aligning with the content of Matthew 8, 11, which says, Many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast. It is written, After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. The four angels here are speaking of archangels, or commanding or chief angels. And the four winds of the earth that the archangels are holding back represents the many angels belonging to them. In the same way as there are organizations in our daily life, and a person who is head of that group is referred to as the chief of something, or the representative of the company is also expressed as a head, there are angels of hev in heaven that have that role. And it is made up of four organizations of angels, and it was there that the expression, the commanding angel, is used. Therefore, these archangels are holding back the angels of the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. So this earth refers to the tabernacle temple, and the sea refers to the world. And the various trees refers to various denominations. Therefore, to understand why it says to prevent any wind from blowing, it is because it is written in verse 3, Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. According to these words, the reason why the four angels held back the four winds was to seal the 144,000 servants of God. So until they are sealed, the winds are held back, and therefore judgment is held back. Then, after they are sealed, the wind and judgment will continue again, correct? So there was a strong wind in chapter 6, and in chapter 7, the wind is held back. And in chapter 6, judgment took place through the angels. Then in chapter 7, judgment is held back again. So the 144,000 must be sealed. Then after the sealing, the wind and judgment comes back. So the wind is held back here. So to continue, it says, Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. This is one of the most important contents that we are going to learn today. So God's seal. What does this mean? In Eastern characters, it is not referring to a seal in reference to a person, but to a stamp. So a stamp, if we think about this, one's name is written on stamps or seals. And to say that the seal was used to mark or stamp something, then that indicated it belongs to the one whose name is stamped with. So now, if it is God's seal, God's name must be written on it. So then, what is God's name? Yes. First, it is Jehovah. However, in John chapter 1, verse 1, it says that the Word is God. So now, God's Word is written on the seal of God. And the person who receives that word will also be in the position of the seal of God. So if you go to Haggai chapter 2, verse 23, it says, I will make Zerubbabel a seal of God, his signet ring. But these words fulfilled through Jesus. That's why Jesus said, I'm the one sealed by God, the Father. Therefore, the seal of God, the stamp, to organize, 
It's the, me the meaning of seal is the word of God and the shepherd who received that word. Then if that's the case, what does it mean to put the seal of God on their foreheads? It means to write the word of God in their minds and hearts. If you compare this to a stamp, it means to put a stamp on someone. That means to seal it, correct? So to do the work of sealing someone, the word of God is sealed in their mind and heart so that it may be recorded. This is the work of sealing. Now let's take a look at the meaning of being sealed with the seal of God. When one hears and accepts the word of God and records and retains it in one's mind and heart, that is when one can say, I am sealed. As you can see, there is a seal of God or the stamp of God, which is a word that is being stamped and recorded in our minds and hearts. This is what the meaning of sealing and being sealed is. So currently, I am lecturing concerning God's word of revelation. Then if you look at this from what we have just learned, as I am teaching you the words of this revelation of God, I am sealing. And all of you who are listening, acknowledging this word and accepting it, you are being sealed. Do you understand? It's not that difficult. To continue, it says, Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God, until we put a seal on the forehead of the servants of our God. Then the sun here means God in Psalms chapter 84, verse 11. Therefore, the place where the sun rises is talking about the location where God's work takes place. In other words, the place of fulfillment of revelation. So we can understand that the angel who brings the seal of God has a duty to seal. So when it says, until we put the seal, then the we are referring to those who do the work of sealing or stamping. So first, it is the angel who brings the seal of God. But since it says, until we, and our, the we also includes the angels in the spiritual realm. Then who will do the work of sealing here on earth? So the angel who brings the word of God makes it known to people, but does, it, but does not go to individuals one by one to tell them. And we can see this in Revelation chapter 10. There's an angel who comes with the word of God and that revelation or the revealed word of Jesus. The angel gives his book to one person in Revelation chapter 10 and he eats it. So the one who received and ate this book was able to fully understand these words. So does the Bible say that the Spirit comes and makes make it known to everyone at once, one by one? That's not the case. Rather, the Bible shows us a set blueprint of making these words known first to one person. So it must be done according to God's word. So the shepherd who ate the revealed word a book in Revelation chapter 10 appeared. And the reality of that shepherd is a representative of Shincheonji, Lee Man Hee. So today, the new John, the promised shepherd, who is a representative of Shincheonji, received these words and taught and sealed the 12 tribe leaders. So also, they too have the duty to seal 12,000 people in each tribe. Therefore, the us in this case was first the angels of God in the spiritual realm and also the shepherd who received and ate the revealed book and the 12 tribe leaders of Shincheonji who were sealed by the shepherd who received and ate that book. To continue then, if there is a seal of God, then on the contrary, there is also the seal or mark of Satan. So if one is stamped with the seal of God, they belong to God. But if one receives a seal or stamp of Satan, they become the, the possession of Satan. That's why it is absolutely necessary not to receive Satan's seal. Rather than the expression Satan's seal, Satan's seal is described as Satan's mark in Revelation chapter 13. 
The Word of God is recorded on God's seal. But Satan's words, such as lies and false teachings, are recorded on Satan's stamp. If we go to Revelation chapter 13, lies again is, a, is introduced as 666. So you will learn this detail from the tribe leader who will lecture on this word in Revelation chapter 13. In any case, we must never accept Satan's mark, Satan's lies. Then never forget that the one becomes the devil's possession. So do not say Amen to just anything, and I hope you will absolutely be sealed with the word of truth. So whose seal should we receive? Of course, it must be the seal of God. So the mark of Satan, the seal of Satan, in one word, it's 666. This is by no means a barcode. So Satan's mark is lies. So if one accepts and believes in lies in their heart, then they become Satan's possession. Then in the end, the only place is to go to the lake of fire and sulfur in hell. The purpose of faith is heaven and eternal life. But if one lives a life of faith not knowing, and it's all in vain, what is the point in that? Therefore, we must absolutely receive God's seal, God's stamp, and that is to receive the word of truth. So I hope that we become God's possession, who live in heaven with God forever, together with all of the beloved pastors, theology students, and believers. What is the purpose of our faith? Is it money? Is it honor or authority? No. As 1 John chapter 5, 13 states, the purpose of our faith is to study the Bible and believe that the only purpose of faith in God and Jesus is the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. And the way to achieve it is well recorded in the words of the Bible. Therefore, I hope that all of us, myself and all of you who are being sealed, will be stamped with God's seal, the word of truth. So let's say you want to receive the seal of God, and you ask, what is the seal of God exactly? So I'll answer that question. So the seal of God, the stamp of God that we must receive today, is the new covenant that Jesus spoke of in Luke chapter 22, verse 14 to 20, and Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8 to 12. We must have this word within us, and we, if we can simply describe the new covenant in one word, it is the book of Revelation. So what is the new covenant, you ask? That's right. It is the book of Revelation. Revelation was recorded as a vision revelation or prophecy 2,000 years ago, but today, in this era, it has been fulfilled in reality. That's why it can be testified in this way. Therefore, sealing the prophecy of Revelation, its fulfillment and reality in our minds and our hearts, is a seal of God that we must be sealed with today. So through this seminar on Revelation, I truly hope that our beloved pastors and all believers will have a precious time to be sealed. Allow me to say it again. The seal of God that we must receive today is a new covenant that is the prophecies and the realities of the book of Revelation. Yes, now we will read Revelation chapter 7, verse 5 to 8. However, in chapter 7, verse 4, the number of the sealed servants is recorded. That is, 144,000 from the 12 tribes. And then it speaks of each tribe. So let's confirm the contents from verses 5 to 8. Let's read. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. And from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. Yes, you read well. Now let's look at the number of the sealed servants. They are the 144,000 of the 12 tribes. 
So seeing in Revelation chapter 7, verse 4 to 8, those who are sealed in each tribe is 12,000. And since there are 12 tribes, that is 144,000 total. This 144,000, I'll speak more of later, but this is not a symbolic or figurative number, but in reality, this number of people must be created. So how are these 144,000 created? Is this just a number that will be created aimlessly? No, it is not. This 144,000 was prophesied about 2,600 years ago, and they will be created at the end of age. Therefore, it was prophesied in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 27, that two seeds will be sown, the seed of man and the seed of animals. And according to the word, after about 600 years have passed, Jesus, who came to this earth at the first coming, sowed good seed. The good seed that was sown was speaking about God's seed. However, when God's seed is sown, the enemy, the devil, comes and sows his own seed, the weeds, as well. And Jesus prophesied in advance that when the good seed, God's seed, is sown, the seed will grow and become wheat. And after fully grown, the wheat will be harvested and put into the barn. And that barn is heaven where God and Jesus are. So God's seed has already been sown here on earth, and the devil's seed was also sown. In Luke chapter 8, verse 11, the seed is the Word of God. So the seed that Jesus sowed was not some kind of literal seed sown by at a farm or the kind that a farmer sows, but it is the Word of God, God's seed that was sown. And about 2,000 years have passed since, the, since God's seed was sown. And naturally, the wheat becomes ripe enough through the time of spiritual farming, of course. So if you go to Revelation chapter 14, verse 14 to 16, it says the harvest of the earth is ripe, and the angel harvests with a sickle. So if you see in Revelation chapter 14, the Bible speaks of the ripe first fruits of the harvest are 144,000. Then the 144,000 ripe wheat, the first fruits, have been created. So in James chapter 1, verse 18, it says that they were born by the word of truth. So therefore, today, in this era, it's the work of harvest that is being done, and the 144,000 are harvested and sealed in Revelation chapter 7. And by sealing the words of fulfillment of the true reality of the book of Revelation, the 144,000 who are born with the word of truth are harvested and sealed according to God's purpose. And finally, God's sons, the first fruits, are now created. So who are these 144,000 people? After being harvested, they are sealed with the new covenant of Revelation, and the sealed 144,000 are created. Where in Hebrews chapter 8, it says, I'll put the law of God in their minds and write them in their hearts. And so the law of God, in other words, the words of Revelation, is written in their mind and heart. And since they are sealed, then of course, they are able to teach it to someone else. Therefore, among God's new kingdom and new people of new spiritual Israel, they have the duty as shepherds. Furthermore, in Revelation chapter 22, it speaks of the servants of God who will serve forever and ever as kingdom priests and shepherds. So please keep in mind that these 144,000 will fulfill the duty of a kingdom priest who teaches the word in God's kingdom. They are truly blessed people. It was prophesied 2,600 years ago, and as a reality today, they have become the sons of God who are born of God's seed, and therefore they have received the greatest blessing. 
then how can one know if one has been sealed? In other words, how can we know if we are sealed or not? Can one be sealed only by merely saying they are sealed? For example, how do we know at school whether a student knows a math problem? Or in the expression of what we're looking at today, whether that student wrote it down in his mind or heart. So the student can say, I know it well, but does it mean that the student actually knows? No, of course not. He must take an exam. Only then will his true ability be, be revealed, correct? So today, in the same way, Shin c h e n j i has exams in the work of fulfillment to see whether or not we have written the New Covenant revelation in our minds and hearts. So the 12 tribes of Shin c h e n j i have taken the exam to put the New Covenant into action. And just as it is shown in this photo, you see the members of a certain tribe and church wearing white and kneeling in front of the throne of God and being tested with the words of revelation. Therefore, I hope all of you who are hearing these words will take a look at this fulfillment and reality that has only appeared in the 12 tribes of Shinchaji from the whole world. As we continue seeing in Revelation chapter 7 verses 5 to 8, which you have read, you will find the 12 tribes. But when you look at the names of the 12 tribes, they are the names of the 12 sons of Israel that were recorded. Then will these names be used as the names of the tribes today? Or does it contain a deeper will of God? And I will speak of this content. So the new kingdom and new people, the new spiritual Israel that is being created today, the names of the 12 tribes are the names of the 12 disciples of Jesus. In the reference, the names of the 12 sons of Jacob from the Old Testament were recorded, but in reality and fulfillment today, the names of the 12 disciples of Jesus are used. This is not just my personal opin opinion or thoughts. It is according to what Jesus said. If you go to Matthew chapter 19, verse 28, it says, At the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man, Jesus, sits on His glorious throne, You who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now then, this will happen when the world is renewed, which is when the seventh trumpet in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 is blown. And at that time, the world will change from the kingdom of the world to the kingdom of God. And at such a time, the 12 disciples who followed Jesus He said he will give them the authority to judge the 12 tribes of Israel that appear at this time. But the issue is that 2,000 years ago, Jesus' disciples were martyred and died and does not have a physical body now. But how can they govern over the 12 tribes that are created on this earth? The answer is if you go to Revelation chapter 21, verse 14, it says that the 12 disciples are the 12 foundations. That means in the spiritual realm, the holy city, New Jerusalem of heaven, the 12 disciples of Jesus are the 12 foundations. However, this kingdom of God is coming down onto this earth, where it speaks of the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down to a new heaven and a new earth. Since it will come down to this earth, the names of the disciples as they are will come down to this earth. Then naturally, the names of the 12 tribes will be the names of the disciples, according to what was written. Therefore, the spirit and the body must unite as one, just as if you were to give a name to a bowl or vessel. But it's according to what? Yes, that's correct. It will be named according to the contents inside of it. So if you put rice in it, it becomes a rice bowl. If you put soup, it becomes a soup bowl. And if you put soy sauce, it becomes a soy sauce container. Just as the, same, as, just as the name changes according to what is in the vessel, then the spirit of the disciples too will use the flesh or vessel, and it's like sitting on thrones here on earth. Then of course, the name of that tribe is created through the name of the spirit. So today, the 12 tribes of Shinchanji are the 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel with the names of the disciples. 
Therefore, there is a tribe of John, tribe of Peter, tribe of James, tribe of Andrew, the tribe of Thaddeus, the tribe of Philip, the tribe of Simon, the tribe of Bartholomew, the tribe of Matthew, the tribe of Matthias, the tribe of James, the tribe of Thomas, and like this, the names of the twelve disciples are used as the names of each tribe. This is a work of fulfillment. Then, why were the names of the twelve tribes of the Old Testament recorded in the reference verses? This is because God wants to do the work of restoration of His kingdom of Israel. So the twelve disciples who died 2,000 years ago, are now in spirit today. Were the spirits united with the leaders of the 12 tribes established on this earth and became one, and together the work of governing and judging the 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel of Shincheonji here on earth are being fulfilled. So today, the structure of the throne of Shincheonji, the twelve tribes, has been fulfilled. This was the actual work of fulfillment in Shincheonji, which cannot, which cannot be found anywhere else in the world. Thus, on March 14, 1995, at the Suwon Public Stadium, the leaders of the twelve tribes were established, and the work of fulfilling the structure of the throne took place. I hope you know that this is a reality that only exists in Shincheonji, which cannot be found anywhere else in the world. So to continue, let's take a look at the contents of Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 14. Let's read. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These are white robes. Who are they? And where do they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Yes, you read well. Again, the first words that appear in chapter 7, verse 9 is, After this. Didn't we see this in Ch Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 earlier? So what happened before Revelation chapter 7, verse 9? What we have seen earlier, there is a creation of the 144,000. So the previous after this was that the winds were held back, meaning judgment is held back until the 144,000 are sealed. It says that the winds will be held back while being sealed. So when the work of sealing has finally taken place, it means that the winds will blow again. Correct? So now looking at this in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 and verse 14, it is called a great tribulation. From the midst of the great tribulation, a great multitude in white, in white robes come out that no one can count. Then where does the great multitude in white robes come out from? According to what we read, from every nation, tribe, people, and language that no one can count. Here it says that no one can count. And when it speaks of 144,000, then that can be counted, correct? So that's speaking about an actual number. But when it says that no one can count, that means that there are too many to count. But why do so many people come from nations, tribes, peoples, and languages? The nation represents a church, a tribe, a denomination, a people, a church member, and languages as doctrines. As 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 speaks of a royal priesthood, just as a king rules a kingdom, now a royal priesthood and a shepherd governs a church. And with the same natural principle, 
It speaks of many people that cannot be counted, who will come from many churches, denominations, church members, and doctrines, and gather before God's throne. Well then, what does that the great multitude dressed in white mean? When it says white clothes, it doesn't actually mean literal white clothes, but the clothes of the heart is referred to these white clothes. That is why only the blood of Jesus can wash the clothes of the heart. Where one can say that the heart has become clean as white and pure. And that's why white clothes represent the heart and righteous acts because they are washed with the blood of Christ. As John 15 verse 3 states, you are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. So only the words of Jesus or the blood of the Lamb can cleanse us from our sins and filthiness, and only then can we become holy and be qualified to live together with Jesus and God. Then the Word, where the great multitude who have been cleansed by the words of Jesus can come to the throne of God and the Lamb with palm branches in their hands, will fulfill. So as we look at what kind of people this great multitude in white clothes are, they are from every nation, tribe, people, and language who, after perceiving God's word, they come out from every denomination. From each denomination. They come out of every denomination saying, ah, Jesus' words are true. So then they come to new spiritual Israel. And after hearing the words from the 12 tribes, they say, ah, this word is true, and ultimately come out of every denomination. But, but this great multitude are not shepherds. They are the people and the saints. So earlier, the 144,000 are sealed and therefore referring to shepherds. And this great multitude gather in countless numbers after this from the great tribulation. Please note again that those who hear the word that is coming out from New Spiritual Israel, the 12 tribes of Shincheonji today, and perceive, ah, these words are true, and come out to gather as a great multitude in white, are the people the saints. Then where is the throne of God and the Lamb where the great multitude and white robes gather. We can see this in the Bible. When we go to Revelation chapter 14, it says, Behold, the Lamb stands on Mount Zion, and with Him the 144,000. Then Jesus is standing on Mount Zion, but the 144,000 are with Him. However, since the 144,000 are made up of the 12 tribes in Revelation chapter 7, which we have just learned, then in front of the throne of God and of the Lamb, where the great multitude in white gathers, where is this exactly? It's where the 12 tribes are. In other words, it's a place where the 12 tribes. So even now, at Shincheonji, in faith, we are truly spreading the word to the whole world through the seminar of Revelation and believe that there will be a huge work of great multitudes that no one can count who will hear and perceive the word and gather. Then what is the difference between the 144,000 and the great multitude in white? So 144,000 will be sealed, correct? And there are those who are sealed. Then they are kingdom priests, becoming shepherds. And after the 144,000 are sealed, the great multitude in white, ro in white robes will gather, whose sins have been atoned by the blood of Jesus, and they become the people, the saints. Also, the 144,000 will be those who are harvested. Thus, the 144,000 were harvested and sealed, belonging to the 12 tribes, carrying out the duty of a kingdom priest. And those who have come to God's kingdom washed in the blood of the Lamb and become people and saints are the great multitude in white. In short, the multitude in white. Yes, now let's read Revelation chapter 7, verse 15 to 17 together. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple, and He who sits on the throne will spread His tent over them. 
Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Yes, you read well. There it is written, they are before the throne of God, correct? So this is taking what was mentioned before and seeing the same as it is. This is referring to the 144,000 of the great multitude in white. Speaking of the 12 tribes of the new spiritual Israel, and they are before the throne of God. It says that they serve God day and night in the temple of God. And the place where there is 144,000 and the multitude in white is the temple of God, which is the new heaven and new earth. That is, in other words, the temple of tabernacle of testimony. This is the new heaven and new earth, the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. This has now become the temple of God on earth. But it says that God will spread His tent over them. God's dwelling place is the heaven of the spiritual realm. So this kingdom of heaven is a tent God will spread over them, the 144,000 and the multitude in white. So Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 to 3 have the same content. The holy city, New Jerusalem, of the spiritual realm will come down to the new heaven and new earth because the dwelling of God is with men. So what will happen when God sets up and spreads this dwelling place? You can see in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, it says there will be no more death. So before Adam sinned, what God desired so much was to live eternally with Adam. However, because of Adam's sin, God left and death came to this earth. God who had left wanted to come back to this earth, but he couldn't because of people's sins. But now, all of God's plans are being fulfilled. And as God has finally come back again today, the very work of restoration of all things is fulfilling. Therefore, God's purpose, heaven and eternal life, is being fulfilled today. Therefore, God's tent will spread over them. These words are now being fulfilled today. So to those that are listening, whom I love, we must believe these words. Even Jesus, who came to this earth 2,000 years ago, proclaimed regarding eternal life, do you prefer to live or to die? Everyone's hope is not to die. And that is also the will of God. Therefore, the Bible clearly prophesied by God and by Jesus, saying, there will be no more death. So this prophecy will absolutely fulfill according to these words. So I hope you will believe in this word. It is also recorded that the Lamb will be our shepherd, and now He leads us to springs of living water. The water of life means the word of life that gives eternal life. Then naturally, the words of the water of life, of course, should have a source, correct? In other words, there must be a spring or fountain of this water. The source and the fountain of the word of life, then, is from Jesus' throne, which God and the Lamb are at. However, the shepherd whom God and Jesus are with here on earth is also like a spring, the source of the word of life. Therefore, the shepherd who preaches the word of life and the one who overcomes today becomes a reality of the spring of the water of life. And furthermore, those who have received the word of the water of life will not be hurt by the sun or the heat. They will never be marked by the devil's lies and will not be deceived by the devil's words, but will keep God and Jesus' words until the very end and go to heaven. Yes, this is what the Word speaks of. And we saw all the contents of Revelation chapter 7. So let's go over the conclusion together. So what the Bible promises are those who belong to God. The only people of God who are the 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel. 
This is not my words or my story, but the content of Revelation chapter 7 that we learned today. So if one is not part of the 144,000 and great multitude in white of new spiritual Israel, they will become people who have absolutely nothing to do with God. So everyone whom I love, I truly hope that we will become God's people of heaven and be a part of the 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel who are saved and are recognized by God. The path of faith is to follow the Bible. If I do things with my own thoughts and expect, the Lord will understand my heart. That is not the case. In Matthew chapter 7, it is said, Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father. This is the will of our God, the will of Jesus today. So I hope we can fully perceive the words of this book of Revelation so that we can all go to heaven and live with God for eternity. So to continue, now if you look in Revelation, it says that the great multitude in white are washed in the blood of the Lamb and made them white. And it says the 144,000 priests are also a kingdom priest bought by the blood of Jesus, purchased. And that is why the blood of Jesus is absolutely necessary for us. But what is the blood of Jesus? You should know, right? The blood of Jesus is the revealed word. So today, these words that testify to the reality of the fulfillment of the book of Revelation is the blood of Jesus that we must eat and drink and wash with. So this blood of Jesus must enter me, and through the effect of that blood, my sins are removed, and I have the qualification to live with God. So today, I hope that through the words of this revelation, the blood of Jesus, we can all be forgiven of our sins and become children of God, loving pastors and theology students, and so many of believers. How long have we been waiting for Jesus' second coming? And how long have we been waiting for Jesus' new covenant to be fulfilled? So today, I'm testifying to you these words that have now been fulfilled. The time has come, and now God's own words of the seeker of the kingdom of heaven, the words of the book of Revelation, were kept by God to this very day. By the proper time, he gave them to Jesus, and Jesus opened the seals of this book, fulfilling all the words written. And every time he fulfilled these words, he showed all the realities that appeared to one person. That is today, the promised shepherd, the chairman of Shincheonji, the representative of Shincheonji. So that shepherd saw, all, saw and heard all the events of the book of Revelation, and he was at the location where Revelation fulfilled. And that's why he knows all this. And Jesus fed this shepherd the scroll, as in Revelation chapter 10. And also what he has saw and heard, he was sent to the churches, as in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel for the churches to testify to them. So like now, with the promised shepherd at the forefront, the 12 tribe leaders are now testifying the book of Revelation as one. Therefore, today, this book of Revelation is open, and it is a book that gives life that we must know. And it is said that if one adds or subtracts from this book, one may not enter heaven. So even if we come from different denominations and doctrines, we can all become one in this word, and we can all achieve the heaven and eternal life we so long for. And it will be truly so good if we could achieve everything and enter into that hope. Lastly, for myself and all of you, all of you who are hearing these words, I believe that we will become one. I believe that we are one in God and Jesus. Let's not quarrel, but become one in faith. And let's enter into heaven. I genuinely love you. Finally, I'll raise my finger when I say we are one, which means we are one in God and in Jesus. Then together, thank you for listening. Yes, we believe that we are one in God and in Jesus. Let's go to heaven together. Yes, we are one. Yes, thank you.
Lastly, let's pray together. Most Holy Father God, we give thanks and glory to you for allowing us a precious day today and for allowing us to study the words of Revelation chapter 7 together. Father God, please help all of us to belong to the 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel according to your words. And furthermore, help us so that we can wash ourselves completely with the blood of Christ and become qualified to serve you and Christ and live together. Our only purpose is heaven. We believe that we must know the book of Revelation in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is said that if we add or subtract from the book of Revelation, we will not be able to enter. So please, give us the grace so that we can fully learn these words and go to heaven without adding or subtracting. Give your infinite grace of heaven to the beloved pastors, theology students, and all the believers who are listening to this word so that they can understand the word open their hearts, eyes, and ears to understand your word. And God, only, God, work only so that people can be sealed and become your precious people in the kingdom of heaven. Also in Revelation chapter 22, and until the very moment that all these things complete, we ask that everyone here can listen to these words to the very end. We thank you, and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, thank you so much for listening. We will end here. Thank you. First, it says hail and fire mixed with blood were hurled down to the earth, burning up a third of the earth and the trees. Because of this verse, some people say that they refer to the nuclear bombs. But if these are bombs, they should be found in military weapons storage, right? Without understanding the first six trumpets, you can't hear or confirm the seventh trumpet sound either. But do open up your heart and listen carefully so you can find and accept the message of salvation inside these trumpets. Like you've just seen in the video, Andrew tribe leader Kim Ilgon will explain the content of Revelation 8 next time. Revelation chapter 8 talks about the four out of the seven trumpets that are blown as the last seal of Revelation becomes open. The seminar will start at the same time as today. I hope everyone attends to perceive God's true will and His words of promise. The reason Shincheonji Church can confidently testify to the words of Revelation is that we have the promised shepherd with us who has a complete understanding of the prophecies and fulfillment of Revelation as well as the prophecies and fulfillment of the four Gospels. If you have more questions regarding the seminar, or any other questions about Shincheonji Church or what we teach, please call the numbers on the screen you see now showing different tribes. We'll kindly answer your questions and give further guidance. We'll now finish everything here with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This will conclude today's seminar of testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, God's new covenant. Thank you very much for being with us at this Shincheonji online seminar.